Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? To miss it each night and day. I I don't really know the way, the rest of the words of that song. Uh, I don't know. Nice. And when you travel and you see your family or whatever, they say, why do you live in New Orleans? You know, I just went to New Orleans and there was just a bunch of drunks. And it's like, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just a bunch of drunks, but somehow, I don't know. I don't know what's so special about this place and why we fall in love with it. But it gets under your skin like nothing else does. And maybe you don't really know that until you've been in the middle of like a second line or, or whatever, and, and, or you're made to feel it, it's it's a town that maybe somehow it's easy to actually become a part of the working fabric of it in a way. The ability to be needed and the ability to contribute that everyone can do and you, how easy it is to not be an outsider, how easy it is to be welcome into the circle somehow. Basically based on local trash, we actually invented the uh, NOWA, which is a uh, New Orleans waste. And we, we, we collected just around zeitgeist, around where we live, around places we thought that might be uh, uh, ha have some interesting uh, acoustic waste. Uh, we took it over and we took it in and we worked all day on it and in the nights we performed with guests. Uh, uh, our our stuff, our our yeah, self-made uh, instruments. 
Material kann Aufschluss geben, wie eine Landschaft tönt. Das Material schafft den Klangraum. Und es hat sehr Sinn gemacht, das Projekt in New Orleans durchzuführen, weil es natürlich eine riesige Tradition gibt von Improvisation und natürlich auch Tradition gibt vom Instrument bauen aus dem, was umeinander liegt. Intensität, der Fokus, die Aufmerksamkeit, ähm, die intime Geschichte vom Moment teilen, gemeinsam, das ist, was mich in der Musik interessiert, in der Improvisation. Durch unsere Arbeit mit dem gefundenen Material haben wir Geschichten entwickeln können und die mit den Leuten teilen. Es gibt in New Orleans einen starken sozialen Aspekt in der Musik. Und wir sind wirklich ein Teil von einer musikalischen Familie geworden. Und diese Familie die hat auch ihre Geschichten mit uns teilt. heard a lot of music as you guys did and was really just like wow this is music out in a city with people just living music not in you know not in an academic setting and where people like the music is is very integrated into life
moved to Austin, Texas and went to school for about four weeks. And the four weeks I was there, I, the whole time I was just like in theory and counterpoint classes being like, this is really interesting. I don't want to be here. Like there's nothing, you know, there's no bone in my body that wants to be here in this academic setting right now. And I would go to concerts and there, it was music for other, it, it was academic music for other academics, which is a totally valid thing. But it also felt very separatist to me. And I, after, especially after being here, I was like, I just want to play music. I just want to make sound for people that are in my life and in my community. And I don't want to fabricate a community in order to make sound for them. And after four weeks, I was just really like, I just want to go play music and bars for a while. That's going to be a good education for me. So I moved back here to play music and bars <laughs> for drunk people and dancers. It was kind of haphazard. I didn't expect to stay this long, which I think probably a lot of people here say that same thing. In that period, there's been many times that I've left or tried to leave, been like, okay, I think I'm done. I'm gonna go, and then I always end up coming back. New Orleans is a total like shift in my relationship to the land in New Orleans is really it's a it's a very foreign land for me like the swamp the flatness of it and the swamps of it every time I fly in I'm just like I, I live here this is I choose to live here this is like the most bizarre place to me of you know especially the swamps like land that is not solid land but water that is not water is a really bizarre thing to me.
um, saxophonists basically try to play what they've been practicing. Mm-hmm. You know, they work all day in this small closet facing the wall. And it's like, okay, now I gotta go to the jam session. And one, two, three, four. Look at me. Um, and so this trombone player was, was seeing a concert of some other trombone player who was a very good trombone player and he played some music well. And my friend turned to me and said, why the hell would you ever want to play what you've learned? And I, I realized that I had that same impulse, that if, if you can actually like read about something or have someone tell you something and then go practice it, and that's it, you're done, that seems cheap. Right? Why, why would you want to do that? That means that pretty much anybody could do that, right? So maybe that's not our role, is to take stuff that other people can be taught to do and do it. We have to find out what we haven't been taught or what we can't be taught or what could be taught but it's not appropriate the next day. We, we at least should create this possibility of something new happening, of, of discovering something about music and about ourselves and about relationships and all these things, which, which happen when you don't play what you know, when you leave it open. Mm-hmm. 
Did you keep your eyes on the horizon? Did you keep your spirit alive? Or did you just let it roll? Oh. I say you took your turn. It's always been a place of uh, confluence, you know, both with the waters all coming and from the, you know, three quarters of what is the U.S. territory all coming down to this one point, as well as all the people that travel along waterways and all the culture that they bring. And uh, what, what actually ends up sticking and staying here is got to be strong and vibrant to be able to survive the constant change and the upheaval and turmoil, the storms and stuff like that. I think that things like hurricanes and fires and you know, stuff like that that keeps happening here has made it so that the culture has more tangible roots in the city than the architecture does. So that the place is more dictated, and I think this is a truth in general, but it's much more evident here, it's dictated by the people who are here and what they do, than by the set structures or institutions that are here. It's like people come here and they're all straight laced and they're coming from the Midwest or something like that, and they show up and they're like, I'm gonna have my house gray, I'm gonna have my lawn trimmed, everything's gonna be straight, I can't believe all these freaks out here. And they're sitting out on their step and then somebody comes along with some brownies like, hey, welcome to the neighborhood. And you're eating a brownie and I was like, I feel kind of funny. Hey, look at that brass band coming. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> well, you know what, they're part of the culture. It's just like, you may come with straight notions, but the culture is so strong, it's gonna change you is great. Bring your money. Come on down and party. <laughs> you know, there's fall and stuff with it. That's, that's good. Well, I mean, other places don't have a sense of community and they don't have rites and rituals that mark the important passages in our life. And this place does. And on the negative side, sometimes that's all it is, is that stuff. But, um, so but it's refreshing for people, even no matter where they come from. because it's partly that, like I was talking about that metaphysical swamp effect. It, it's not stable, the ground itself is not stable. So things are constantly moving and buckling, even buildings which are supposed to be stable things, edifices that stay in one place, they don't, they move constantly. The river, if we didn't have the river all, all closed up the way she is, she would be shifting back and forth. And she does in between the levees, but still like it would like it should like naturally this would be flooding once a year mm. and it always changing yeah. and so like it starts there in the land and then it goes into the culture and into the people they're so used to disaster that they they don't hold on to anything real fast they constantly trade this for that and, you know there's only a couple of things that they hold on to I got poem kind of refers to that Hold it back if you can, this river, this flood, this junk stream of... Oh, wait a second. 
Hold it back if you can. This river, this flood, this junk stream of bicycle parts and road signs, fortune cookie graffiti, dog-eared furniture, punk rock records, pieces of broken hearts, broken lives. How many lies have we told ourselves that maybe just around the corner in a new town with new skills, a new haircut, we could be happy. And we keep bumping into it like moths around a burning bulb, like a meteor shower, like gold dust dreams. We yearn and fizzle, but we never see the light. And all I wanted to do was hold you, but your heart's already caught the last train out, and I throw mine wrapped in red tissue after it like a fool and run empty the other way down the tracks. People see me and think I'm running away, but that's only because they move too slow and they don't know how fast it is I gotta run in the morning. See, love moves pretty fast on the ground and you gotta get up pretty early in the morning if you wanna catch it. Will your love move like a red streak reflected in street puddles darting in front of cars swerving like it was drunk though we both knew it hadn't had a drop. And what kind of fool wouldn't stop for a love like that? But sometimes I get caught in the flood, juxtaposed in the junk, attracted to some rust-encrusted bloom of post-industrial beauty like a Promethean moth. Sadness is gorgeous, seductive, elusive, draws me in with a promise of insight. An epiphany, a glimpse into the mysteries of night, lures me, lulls me into a sleight of hand stupor. To my red star passes out of sight, and I slump drunk on despair before a lower decayed or dive or pass out in my bunk but still aware of your beauty we both know the hard roads and we've walked a few side by side and if the tide comes in and one of us must take another path well then i'm no less grace forever stepping once with you and you can be angry and you can wish me into a unicorn but i will not be eroded i'll still be drunk and i'll still be in love with you <laughs> we all got dreams all dreams are different the beauty of this one is that I still wake up in your arms. Um, it seems like everybody plays with everybody else. Eventually, sooner or later, <laughs> most of these, most of these, most of the people that you all are playing with this week are friends of mine that I've played with before, and maybe the others are just friends of mine that I haven't met yet.
I was in Montreal actually when the storm hit. I was traveling there for a week and I didn't know uh, that the Katrina was even coming because I was in Montreal and I read about it the day it hit the city in the paper, newspaper, and, uh, and my, my apartment got destroyed, but it wasn't flooded out. It was the roof tore off and it rained inside of my apartment. So that's how my, my apartment went. But, but all of my friends and everybody was all of a sudden out of the city. So, so it's a very strange feeling to, <clears throat> to have everybody just be gone out of, out of a, a, a very busy musical network. The idea of death and rebirth has always been part of this city. You know, the, when someone dies and you have the second line, you know, so it's celebrating life and death. And uh, it's always been look, looking at death in a, in a very direct you know, way. And so all of a sudden, you know, this life is happening now after this huge storm. Um, and, and different musicians that would maybe would have never worked together are working together. So you have somebody with a mindset of maybe only, you know, punk music, and all of a sudden somebody that only plays classical music, and then, oh, well, they're the only two pe musicians around, so they better work together, you know, to make something happen. It's it's interesting what happened. The storm really gave me a focus, like now or never, because it could be all gone tomorrow. So if you want to say something go there and say it now, you know, go, go and say this right now, make it happen right now. So it helped me to do what I really wanted to do, express myself. This could all be gone tomorrow. So if I want to do this, I have today. This is my chance, let's do it now. So eat or die. I like having that solid, uh, living here is like, I feel really like supported. It's ironic too, to feel supported in a city that could go away at any point. Like you feel supported, but it's also like filled with water on the bottom. So there's nothing really stable, you know?
lot of times people have a, a feeling that New Orleans is about tradition, and it certainly is. And one of the great things about life in New Orleans is the way your life is ritualized. And there, for all the seasons, there are uh, festivals and rituals that occur, and it becomes a part of your life, and there's music for all of these rituals. So, for that reason, we repeat a lot of the traditions that we come up in and uh, play a lot of the same songs over and over again, and it becomes a part of the, just the general fabric of our lives. And we, we play our music in the streets, and we dance in the street, and we sing in the street, and we, we create uh, incredible costumes that hint at the larger part of our soul and walk through the streets uh, screaming our heads off and do, making this music. And I feel extremely blessed to be living in New Orleans at this particular time because after the Great Flood came and so many people were suffering so much, it became instantly apparent that the music and the culture was so strong that it just it buoyed up the entire community and people were able to dig in to that tradition and rebuild. Experiences like Katrina and disasters reinforce this, this respect for death and keeping death close to you, keeping, keeping your death close to you and using that as a means to intensify your life and your, uh, the strength of will that you use to live a full life, knowing that you're gonna die. Improvised music is music of the moment. But one of the things you learn from improvised music is that all music should be played in the moment. And including highly structured uh, classical music, written music, the whole point is to be in the moment. So, um, composed music can teach you about improvised music and vice versa. From improvising music, you learn about acceptance of every single sound and being in the moment and accepting everything that happens.
rhythms that are here that are a result of all the historical aspects of the city are really important for music, but drummers especially, there's a huge West African influence um, and the rhythmic patterns that you know, migrated you know, here many years ago have stayed. And uh, I, what happened to my drumming after I moved here was a wonderful thing. Um, it taught me to, um, to relax a lot on the rhythm and um, it taught me a lot about the intricacy that can be communicated through simplicity. There's also the, uh, the attitude that is embodied by a lot of the citizens here um, is very relaxed and very permissive. Uh, artistically and uh, interpersonally and you know in general socially uh, that really gives you the opportunity to kind of explore what your vision is and, and, um, and not be so not be so married to a concept you, know, you, can, you can try your concept out and, and, and feel what's working and what's not and everyone is really into that process and that's that's a very important thing to have a nurturing environment to, to do new things. New Orleans music is very body oriented. And, uh, and it's true, and you know, I'll do, like I get to do so many different things. So, you know, if you go play one night with George Porter's band and you're just playing this deep grooving New Orleans stuff that you can't be still on, you know, and then the next night you go play some freely improvised music, you can't help but bring this vibe of, oh, last night there was this groove happening and people were moving their bodies. So tonight I kinda, I wanna make that happen again. energy in the city in those first few months after Katrina because it really felt like the frontier out here. Uh, if people were back, they were back because they were really dedicated to being here. And if they were back and they were involved in any arts or culture or music, there was this, um, 
this real sense of purpose about what you were doing. Uh, you really felt like you were you were in a good way fighting for the for the survival of this place that you really cared about and fighting for the values that that you stood for. So there was something very positive and very righteous about that. And um, the first sort of big concert I put together after Katrina was in December of 2005, and it was kind of intended as sort of a gathering and homecoming for the musicians that were conducting of it. And there was a really large audience because at that time uh, there weren't many gigs going on in the city in December of 2005, so if there was one, people would come out in large numbers. There was just a real sense of focus about it. And I definitely remember that moment specifically made me feel that uh, there's a chance that this is gonna really gain some traction post-Katrina, that, you know, that, that my fear that we'd lost the audience was unfounded and that you know maybe the uh, the nature of this music and how it deals with contingencies and solutions is maybe even more appropriate to the city now than it was before Katrina because the period after Katrina you essentially were li living like you know your life was like improvised music you know you didn't know what was going to happen from day to day you were very dependent on how well you could interact with others, how well you could pay attention to others, how well you could think on your feet, how well you could keep your cool when things didn't go your way. And these are all the exact same skills that you use when you're playing improvised music, except it was uh, being translated to your everyday life. So yeah, I would say it, it, the music definitely um, resonated with people in a different way after Katrina, and uh, that's why. I get a little emotional when I think of that period after Katrina too. It does. It start just as I start talking about it. It's like oh, it's, it's, I start you know almost tearing up a little bit. It was so intense. It's uh, it's it's, it's not sad tears. It's just like it was such an intense period. It does make it gets me. Uh, it kind of catches you by surprise when you talk about it. You start feeling this old emotion you know come back in you. It's a funny thing. they've reshaped the city in a good way or a bad way. I don't know if they could if they wanted to because New Orleans as a, as a place and as a culture also kind of has its own inertia that's resistant to a lot of these things that have uh, 
ruined a lot of the rest of America right now. A lot of it they could try to do here and it maybe wouldn't work just because our own energy here is so strong and so entrenched for both good and for ill that they could try it and it maybe wouldn't even take. Because uh, this is a, as you know, uh, this is an older place than America. When, did they, when does America claim its birth in 1776? There was already a New Orleans for a long time before that. Uh, New Orleans has been under French domination, Spanish domination, and now we're under American domination. And uh, maybe we'll continue to be, maybe, you know, who knows? Who, who knows what the future may hold? But I think this place endures and has its own, uh, it has its own distinctive energy that is a bit affected by what goes on in the rest of America, but it's, uh, it's maybe the least like the rest of America in a lot of ways. So I'm not as afraid for how it's being reshaped now, um, but that, maybe that's just because I'm not as informed. Maybe I should be afraid. <laughs>